Hello, the cats. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be telling you guys stories of what happened behind the scenes of all of the competitions I joined and entered, submitted, didn't win, won from the NYX Face Awards to the One Size Star Search Competition by Patrick Star. So I wanted to let you guys know what I went through <laughs> as I put myself out there since the beginning of 2019, where I decided I'm going to be a content creator or influencer as a side hustle and then becoming a full time influencer content creator due to the fact that I really, really put myself out there for these competitions. On top of that, while I'm giving you this story time, I'm also going to be creating an editorial wearable look of my avant-garde photo shoot that is dark blue. And it was actually from my series trailers for colors. And if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, make sure to follow me on TikTok in the description box. I will link the video. And also here's a little preview where I just created like trailers or commercials for different colors and people voted on it and dark blue was the one that really, really took off. So I will be creating an eye look for this one and I hope you enjoy it. Let's go. So first things first, before I get into my eyes, I'm actually going to go backwards and I'm going to be using the Estate Lip Wet Matte Lip Lippy in the color treat. I wanted a nude lip because I'm going to have more intense eye look. I'm going to bring my mirror closer. Look at that bulb. Perfection. Now that I'm done with the first step of my makeup, let's talk about competition number one. So a little bit of context of why I threw myself into so many competitions when I was just starting out. It's a little bit of my competitive nature to begin with, but also because joining competitions are one of the best ways to get exposure and eyes on your page early on. So this is probably a piece of advice you want to take if you're trying to boost your page and you're like, I don't feel like I'm getting enough eyes on it. You know, seek out competitions. Brands are putting out competitions all the time because they're always looking for fresh faces, fresh influencers to work with. So let's go back to April 19th of 2019. That day specifically, I had made a decision I'm going to take this seriously, meaning content creation, and I'm going to actually try to build a following, see where I can take off with social media. But I've never met anybody who did this full time. I didn't understand the first thing about how to be an influencer. So I was like, I need to do a lot of research. But meanwhile, while I'm doing this research and trying to be well read on this topic in this industry, I also want to continuously build my following and just pursue the creative arts as much as possible. And part of doing that is to join competitions and see what is out there. In order to do research, you need to network. You need to see what other people are doing, what successful influencers are look like. And I'm not just talking about James Charles and Nikki Tutorials and Patrick Starr and like all the big people. I'm talking about all the micro to macro influencers that are within the range that brands are going to be working with, but also not paying like millions of dollars for them. That's probably a more realistic stretch of like, okay, this is probably a goal for me and I need to learn from these people. And even when I was a graphic designer and I graduated from college without a degree in graphic design, when I graduated, I decided I wanted to be a graphic designer because that was also a career that I, never occurred to me, but then I was successful with it and I created my own portfolio. So the first thing I did was go to New York City because that was the most competitive place for brand designers. And I could also meet other brand designers, graphic designers that knew exactly what how the industry worked and were 10 years ahead of me in terms of career and practice. So those are the people that I wanted to surround myself with. And also with competition, there's also opportunity. With the same competitive drive, but also with the same mentality that I had back when I first graduated from college, I also decided to put that into practice for content creation. What better way to experience being an influencer than to just go ahead and like put yourself out there? Because you're gonna have a bunch of talented people out there, but the only the ones that are gonna be proactive and really like marketing themselves properly are the ones that are gonna get noticed. So that's always been something that I've felt really comfortable with is like pushing through the crowd and being that person out there that showcases their talent in a way that will get the attention and the right amount of attention. But being in the spotlight is not easy because that comes with a lot of responsibility, that comes with a lot of unknown. And so it's something that you have to navigate as you're gaining experience from doing these things over and over and over again. So that was a lot of context. I wanted to just say why I decided to do all these competitions in the first place. The first one that I entered was the NYX Face Awards. So at that time, I think my Instagram was about 8,000 followers and I didn't have a TikTok. Instagram was really all I had. I did have a YouTube channel and I had some behind the scenes videos that were like cinematic, aesthetically pleasing video that could put you to sleep that I just had to just have things on my channel. But I really didn't have a vision for myself of like what I would want to be as an influencer. But since the competition rolled around and I saw an ad for it, I decided, okay, you know what? Let me just submit a makeup tutorial. And that was like one of the first makeup tutorials I've ever done. It had 
no talking. It was just a time lapse. It was Baroque themed, but it was honestly like my favorite photo shoot that I did. It was definitely a milestone for me. It required a lot of hand drawing and a lot of patience. And that was something I felt very passionate about. So I said, I'm going to submit this video because it's not half bad, but I also had no studio lighting. I had no equipment besides a secondhand camera and a tripod that was already breaking apart. So I didn't really expect anything to happen, which is the best thing you can do is just to submit it and just expect nothing to happen. Shortly afterwards, I did get a notification. Congratulations, you made it to top 30. And I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Did you just say I made top 30? Like top 30 in the US? Yeah. I made it to top 30 with 8,000 followers on Instagram. I think I had maybe like 30 subscribers on YouTube. I was definitely shocked. That was like a sign from the universe that I was going down the right track. And so they said, do you accept being in this competition? And I said, of course. Well, guess what? The Nick Spacer Words is not a one-time competition. It was long. It had multiple rounds. It's different every single year. So it was top 30, then it was top 15, and then top five. And then they chose one winner out of that, but it was a global winner. Um, from all of the competition winners all over the world and each one had a prompt it was partially voted upon by a small jury and the majority of it was popular vote and so as an influencer with 8,000 followers I was going up against people with 200,000 subscribers on YouTube and a strong fan base and I'm looking at my stats going <laughs> this is not gonna happen but I said you know what I'll just keep going the first competition came around I put out a YouTube video I took the prompt I did it and I was also in the process of moving across the country it was so, so difficult to manage. I was moving from Boston to California and the move there was intense. You not only had to move everything, I wasn't familiar with the cities. I had an apartment with no furniture on it. I was filming things with the help of my then boyfriend, now husband. I had to do unboxing, I had to do IG stories and I had no idea. All I wanted to do was just be a part of this competition on YouTube and produce that like final video. But the promotion up to the video and getting people involved was so dang difficult. Like, I don't think people understand how much behind the scenes work goes into these types of competitions. It was insane. I was interviewing and applying for jobs at that time with absolutely no furniture and barely enough money. I got my first box of NYX professional makeup products. It was like 22 pounds of makeup that arrived at my doorstep. And I had only previously owned a handful of products. I'm pretty stingy when it comes to like buying things that aren't essential. So buying makeup was really hard for me. I had face paints and some eyeshadows and all of a sudden I was just granted with like an entire box full of makeup and I cried purely out of happiness but also I cried because I was stressed. I felt like I had jumped into this competition way too early. I had no idea what I was doing. I felt like a huge imposter because I couldn't tell the difference between tinted moisturizer and foundation. There's just like no rule book that tells you here's the products like this is how you use it I mean it was a competition they just expected these people to be makeup artists I was self-taught I didn't know the difference between water activated or grease paints and so I was learning as I went along and I was googling things I was like what is this product and I was learning like how the chemistry of it worked on my face no one tells you these things and so I was like there's more than one type of eyeliner like what the heck like gel and liquid and pencil like all these like basic things like I didn't own them I used drugstore makeup from CVS, but the thing I was really good with was just taking a small amount of resources and making some art with it, right? So I said, let's focus on our strengths. Let's do this. Stop hyperventilating, Cindy, aka that's what my husband told me to do. And you are going to get your shit together and make this happen. You're not going to fall under the pressure. As I was going through this competition, I made it to top 15 next. And every single morning at like 7.30 a.m. as I was walking like a mile and a half to work because I got a job in the middle of this competition, I would go on Instagram story and I'd be recording myself going, the video is coming out in two days or the video is out today. Please make sure to vote for me. Like I felt so strange because prior to that point, I had never really like gone into actual promotion. Like I've been putting my work out there on social media, but I had not actually like done anything to test my influence to be like vote for me on that note let me pause and go into my eyeliner i'm going to be using the nyx vivid brights in the color vivid sapphire it's a liquid liner and it's gorgeous i'm gonna pull this side of my eye a little bit so that i can get a nice line draw up and connect it boom Now I also want to do little triangles for my inner corner. Boom! Okay, now that we have our eyeliner done from NYX, then I'm going to talk a little bit 
about how the competition ended. At this point, I am gaining followers like crazy because the exposure on the Knicks Instagram was so great. I was also messaging other contestants and talking to them and making friends with them. I think that's the thing about competitions that a lot of people undervalue is that when you're part of a competition, you often become really good friends with the contestants because you're all having this like shared experience that no one else is having. So I connected with a few of them over Instagram and some of them I actually still to this day keep in touch with and we're also on the same PR list and stuff. We've even done collabs together. That's the beauty of just like competitions that like no matter who wins at the end of the day, like you're still making friends out of it. But I was learning from them. Every single time I saw them post on the stories, I would look at them and be like, oh, okay, like I wonder how they're doing it. And I figured out different techniques here and there from watching people who've been doing this influencing thing longer. So it doesn't matter that I've been painting my face for about seven years at that point. I had absolutely no idea how to be an influencer. And some people had actually done their research really early on and just went in there with the mindset that they were going to be an influencer and they're going to treat this really seriously. So I was like, I'm going to learn from them. I'm so fascinated by everyone. Plus, I was so honored to be there at every step of the way and be receiving boxes and boxes of makeup. Top 30, they gave me a box. Top 15, I also got a box. And I thought at this point, I looked at my competition and I'm pretty good judge of the situation. I felt like this is probably going to be the end of the line. And it was, you know, I didn't make it to top five and that was perfectly fine. I was just really happy to be along for the ride considering that I had less than 10,000 followers. So during the competition, I did finally break 10,000 followers. It was an amazing moment and things just started to pick up right from there. After that competition was over, obviously the following started slowing down a little bit, but brands started reaching out to me and like saying, hey, we would love to work with you because now there were eyes on me. My family and my family in-laws, they were constantly being my biggest hype men. They were the first ones to vote for me. They're sharing the post. They were literally emailing their friends. And so I got an international audience because my parents were in the Philippines and my sisters were helping out. And so it was very much like just family and friends trying to help out as much as possible. And I had to be really ballsy and I had to reach out to people like, hey, could you please vote for me? And I got a bit desperate and I was reaching out to people that I had never had a conversation for literally years. And the first thing I did was just spam them with messages of being like, hey, do you mind like voting for me and like creating this sob story, which is like the worst thing that you could possibly do. And it could definitely sever and burn some bridges. But some people were actually surprisingly really supportive, even though I probably shouldn't have done that. It's also part of the imposter syndrome. Like I definitely felt like I wasn't ready to be in this competition. So it was kind of a relief when I didn't make it to top five. I was kind of like, that sucks. But honestly, like this is enough for our first rodeo. Thank you so much, Nyx, for having me on this competition. Anyway. Anyways, I think I learned a lot. Now, the next thing that happened right afterwards was the International Beauty Industry Awards, the IBI Awards. And I felt like I was in such a high from just being in this Next Face Awards. I was like, I'm gonna submit myself into this. And then I ended up winning Best Avant-Garde Makeup Artist of 2019. And it was incredible. I got a trophy and everything. I was so happy. I did an unboxing. Shortly afterwards, because I got such a high dopamine rush from being in competitions, I totally burned out. I spent three months off of social media Media because I just couldn't see the same amount of following every single day. I wasn't getting a shit ton of followers every single day. I wasn't getting a lot of engagement because I felt like I was no longer relevant. So it sucked. I was really used to that attention for a couple of months and all of a sudden I was out of the spotlight. I didn't start off being a content creator with the right drive. Like I wasn't just motivated by the love of art and wanting to turn it into a career. Deep down, I was looking for clout and validation and that's the scariest part because you can't depend on other people to give you clout and validation and stuff in order for your art to be successful because then if you don't get the clout and you don't get the validation then you feel like your work is not worthy which is absolutely not true because looking back I'm still really proud of all the work that I did regardless of how many followers I had right now before I move on to my next competition story I will be taking the elf cosmetics and liquid glitter eyeshadow in the color dirty martini and I'm gonna take a little brush and try to replicate the lines that was part of my picture now I'm gonna take the smallest little brush I can. By the way, this brush is a uh, 10 over zero. That's how small it is. Take it out, take the brush, brush a little bit of the liquid just at the tip. I'm gonna draw some squigglies. I'm doing a braided over and under illusion. It goes under and then goes over. And I'm gonna bring it to the front as well. Under, over, subtle. I'm gonna also do a little design at the bottom. Little squiggly here. Now do it to the other side. 
as we wait for that to dry, we'll move on to the next competition that I was a part of. And that competition was the James Charles casting call for Instant Influencer in 2019. It was a competition to get into a competition. It was an audition, a casting call, right? So this is the first one I've ever done, but it seemed like because I literally just became an influencer, I would enter this. So the look that I had in mind for that particular video was something that I had planned. I actually had been inspired by an artist called Think Lumi, and as a graphic designer, I follow a lot of digital illustrators, graphic designers, and layout designers, and I wanted to always collab with them. So now that I have just a little bit more following, I reached out and I said, hey, I really, really love your work. Would you mind if we did a collab together? And he was super nice and sent me a picture that I really, really loved of his, where he created with an astronaut and had like a galaxy and this like triangle that had yellow neon glowing things. And I've always had something for like doors and portals and I had to do an intro video. So that honestly was very strange for me. It was a five minute video, but as I was filming the video, I was doing the makeup. I was like talking normally that I would, but because I only had five minutes to cut things in, I had to be more prepared with the amount of material that I was actually going to share about my life. Just something that would be good for the audition and to show my personality. So I was actually really, really tired because I filmed this after work one day. I had the notes like right next to my computer. I would do a little bit of makeup, read a little bit, and then I would just be silent for like half an hour to do the rest of my makeup. And then I would turn back after a certain point of my makeup being done and I would say the next part and I would stop and do my makeup again. And this lasted for maybe like two and a half hours or something like that. I was being really careful about the makeup because I didn't want to mess it up, but I was also so, so tired. So I couldn't really take any longer than that. And so what came out of like a two and a half hour footage was a five minute video. It blew up my YouTube channel. I hit a thousand subscribers super quickly just from that video because I think to this day it has like 44,000 views or something like that. I've never had anything go past like a thousand views at that point. It was just incredible how much exposure this opportunity gave me. And there were so many supporters and so many people were actively looking for these contestants and being like voting because it, again, it was public voting. The whole point of like being an influencer is having influence. But what do you do when you start off with having no influence? Just try and you put yourself out there. <gasps> Everybody does it. It's hard. But yeah, obviously I didn't make it. They're only choosing five people and I was not one of them unfortunately. But after I didn't get that one, I was like, I need to make more videos because I want to, you know, ride this out and I would create more. So I had a lot of ideas, a lot of ideas. And then I kind of had that imposter syndrome thing hit again. And I also got really busy with work. I got really tired. So I went off of YouTube. The thing about YouTube that's really, really hard is the fact that you have to spend time like cutting together the videos. At that time, I think I like posted like three videos on TikTok, but I really didn't have much from TikTok at all. And I didn't take that seriously. I was mainly just trying to do YouTube and Instagram and neither were really taking off at that point. So I was like, oh, boohoo, you know what? I'll just make a bunch of content and I don't even care if I post it or not. I tried to switch gears and start pushing my work out to other places. I started trying to enter like museum art competitions, photography art competitions, because at this point I was just questioning, is my work really appropriate for social media influencer? When you're trying to be like the trailblazer for like a certain niche, there's a lack of like market research of like whether or not there is an audience out there that is actually interested in your content. I was creating avant-garde makeup looks that were taking me three or four hours trying to record them on my camera and then push them out on YouTube and no one was searching for them and no one was watching them. So I decided, of course, that at the end of the day, I was putting so much effort on it. It was just really, really hard to keep on going. And I gave up on YouTube for a little bit. I gave up on that current state of mind because I clearly was not putting out the right content. I started thinking about quantity over quality and I needed to just revisit and do more research on like what type of videos people are actually going to watch. And thus I started learning more and more about social media marketing, getting really, really deep dive and every morning I woke up with a morning coffee, watch a lecture. And every single weekend I would spend like an hour or two watching videos about how the algorithms work, how YouTube, how Instagram, how TikTok works. At that point there was nothing about TikTok honestly, I was just playing around. Like it was just mostly like Instagram. And after submitting all of my artwork from the YouTube competition and redirecting it into all the like photography competitions and then not winning any of them or not even shortlisting whatever, I also realized that my work is actually perfect for social media and that I just haven't reached the audience that I needed to yet. And I shouldn't let that go because if I had, I wouldn't be here right now. Now moving on with my makeup, I'm gonna go in with my mascara and my eyelashes before I talk about the competition that actually made my TikTok blow up and my Instagram blow up at the same time. First things first, I'm going to have to cover my eyelashes. 
Now going in with the NYX Worth the Hype Volume and Lengthening Mascara in the color blue, I will be making my eyelashes blue. And I also have to make a decision if I would like to add some false eyelashes on top of this because if the blue looks really nice, then maybe I shall keep it. But you'll never find out until you stay to the end of this video. At this point, if you're enjoying the story times, make sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Thank you so much. Also, have you joined any competitions? If so, what were they? And leave a comment below with your experiences. I'd love to hear them. Oh, fudge nuggets. Gotta do my bottom lashes as well. There we go. Moving on to the next competition that I was a part of, which totally blew up my Instagram and TikTok, and it was the ELF Cosmetics TikTok competition in 2020. The thing is, it was a six and a half hour look inspired by an artist on TikTok. That look was actually scheduled and created without the competition in mind. But the competition popped up as an ad on my TikTok feed the next day, and I love signs. I love it when we manifest that we're going to do something and we're going to be selectively paying attention to the things that will come up as opportunities. And I saw that and I intuitively felt like this is an opportunity. And I had just done the design and I filmed everything, but I hadn't cut any of the videos together. So I decided to cut the videos together and submit it as part of the competition. The problem was I didn't want to just like make my six and a half hour look a short one minute video. So instead what I did was I did a three part video for the very first time of kind of the journey of me going through the most complicated makeup that I've ever done in one sitting. It was like six o'clock when I started and it was past midnight when I finished. And then I did an official competition submission after that, which was I think like a 30 second video with all the right tags and the hashtags and stuff like that. That was probably a bad move because my videos that were part one through three actually did a lot better than the official competition submission. But because of the fact that like I had so many viewers coming to my page in the past couple of videos, I ended up actually taking off with that competition video as well. And it got the attention of Elf Cosmetics, <laughs> thankfully. Whenever you join a competition, you should always like read the criteria. You should always read like what the prizes are. There's so many more benefits than just the fact that you might be get free makeup or if it's not a cash prize if it's just like an exposure thing like i still think it's worth joining just because of the fact that it can lead to so many more opportunities as you can hear from like all of my other competitions that i joined but this one i didn't get an email or anything but the winners were announced and i was not one of them which is unfortunate but i did a makeup removal video and that video became my most viral video at that time i had over 10 million views on that and i was like what the and I refer to that story a lot because that was a changing point. That was a turning point. That was a place where I pivoted. I went from maybe gaining like 10 followers a day to hundreds. In a month, I think when I looked at my social blade, I can see my stats. I was gaining like 10,000 followers a month because of those videos taking off. So I tried to milk it. I tried to take those, those little clips of the, of the video and snip them together with trending music and stuff like that. Just whatever I could do. My TikTok was just blowing up like crazy and I literally gained like half a million followers from that competition but I would say like my biggest wins for being part of that competition was the fact that like my endurance for makeup exceeded my own expectations I had no idea I could sit there for like six and a half hours and do my makeup it was a feat for sure. I almost gave up multiple times. I was so hungry, but I kept myself hydrated and I ate snacks along the way, cookies, some sugar to help me go on. And keep in mind, I still had to go to work the next day. So tired. I finished filming at like 2 a.m. It also pushed away an insecurity of mine, which was that I was not very good at technical drawings on my face. I couldn't do many detailed makeup. And so I only did an impressionist or very expressionist type of things, nothing with very like specific drawings. And I wanted to go into the details and I got smaller brushes specifically to try that. I wanted to stop looking at other people's work and feel like I couldn't do that because I was too scared to try it. So that was a major self win. And I think my personality really shone through with those videos, which is really important when you're trying to build a following. About a month later or so, Elf reached out. I landed a paid campaign with them on TikTok and we currently have an amazing relationship together. I really enjoy working with them and uh, it would not have happened if I had not taken that chance and gone for it. I'm an investment. 
and it came true. Now, the last part of my eye makeup that I'm going to do is going to involve the One Size Patrick Star Visionary Eyeshadow Palette in the color Blue Mundu. I want to add a little bit of color just right under my eye, right here, so that this doesn't look so like... So what I need for this is a very, very small brush. Doesn't have to be angled, but that is the one that I grabbed. And I will take this color and add it to this corner just to add a little pop of color. Nice. I still need to decide if I would like to add eyelashes onto my eyes. So while I stare at myself in the monitor, I will talk about the second to last competition, which is the Dua Lipa Levitating TikTok competition in 2020. And with that one, I also didn't win. However, it led to something amazing. So with the Dua Lipa Levitating TikTok competition, it was again, it popped up on my phone. I was like, ah! I need to join this competition. New Rules was like my jam when it first came out. Every single bar I danced to that song and I was like, oh my God, this is my song. So she came out with this competition and said that if you are a makeup artist, you're a dancer or whatever, you need to create a video to my levitating song that just came out at that point. You could do a makeup tutorial, you could do a dance to it, whatever you want to do. And I said, I got you girl. So I created a look that's called Cosmic Glitter. And that one was specifically made with the intention of what they were looking for levitating. So I listened to the music and I was like, okay, I feel this. It has to be like lots of gems, lots of beads. And I absolutely love that look. And also it took me a long time. It was one of the first times I went on live and did my makeup and filmed a TikTok at the same time. So that was stressful, but it was totally worth it. I really liked it. I posted it and I got an email that led to another paid campaign, but it also informed me that I did not win that competition. But I got paid to do another campaign, which is totally fine with me. And at the end of the day, guess what happened? There was a TikTok version of the music video and I was in it. So I'm officially on their channel and it was so exciting, even though I was in there for literally a hot second. And now if you've noticed, I've actually been using products from the brands that hosted the competitions. So I was using the NYX products, I was using e.l.f. products, and I also used the One Size products. So my next and final story would be from One Size, which is the first competition that I had ever won. It was something that I actually entered on a whim. I saw it on Instagram because I follow One Size and I follow Patrick Star. And I at first looked at the competition and I thought, oh, I'm not really sure if I want to do this because I had just been in so many competitions and nothing had ever come out of it in terms of like winning. But with this one, you had to have some of their products already and you had to film a self-taped commercial. So I didn't even know what it was, but I looked at what people were doing and I was like, I think I might be at an advantage because I have a professional camera and I also have professional lighting at this point because after these competitions were happening, over time I started investing in lighting and circle lights and video lights. I invested in higher quality technology and I had more makeup and all I really was missing was the visionary stuff. So I got it and I did a self-taped commercial and that thing actually did take me six hours to film. What I had to do was two looks. I did one that was avant-garde and I did one that was more editorial because because I wanted to show that I had versatility. So the first one ended up kind of looking like there was a piece of Nori seaweed stuck in my face. I want to use these products in a way that it wasn't meant to be used. So for eyeshadow, I wanted to use it as like a stencil on my face. And so they had those like liquid poppers. So I wanted to use those with a stencil, put it on my face and it glorified my face. A couple days afterwards, when I was on my way out to dinner, I get a notification on my phone on Instagram and it's Patrick Starr mentioning me on his story. I was like, what? And they're like, you're one of the six winners. And I was like, what? That was an amazing moment because there's not that many people that I totally like look up to as an influencer. And I don't really believe in like idolizing one person or something, but there are definitely people who I'm like, oh, artistry or personality or like the fact that you're a badass business person, content creator, and you work really, really hard. Patrick Starr was definitely one of those people that I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. I just felt really great to be recognized. And the prize for that one was a campaign with them and a year's worth of PR. So that was definitely a highlight for me, a milestone, because I don't think anybody knew I had submitted myself to so many competitions over the years. I mean, I've just talked about 2019 and 2020, which is the main brunt of all the competitions I've been part of, but I submitted to fashion magazines and 
you know, press ops for years and then no one took me. So if that goes to show anything, if you took anything away from this, is that never give up and uh, have fun with competitions. Don't expect too much to come out of it. It's a great way to network. It's a great way to get noticed for sure. But definitely for me, it's been self-growth. It's been confidence. It's about beating imposter syndrome. And that is more than I can ask for. And at this point, I have made the decision to just keep my eyelashes as my little baby eyelashes by itself without falsies. And this is the final look. I hope you enjoyed those stories and I hope you got to take away something from those experiences that I had. And if you have a suggestion or a request for a future video, please make sure to leave a comment below right now. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're notified every single time I post a new video. As usual, stay creative and I will see you in the next one. Bye. What is it? A freaking car chase out there? Like, go away. I'm trying to film a YouTube video. Please. Stop it!